following divine service setting four, which in the hymnal begins on page 203. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We may have the earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our psalm of the day, which today is Psalm 32, the first seven verses and then closing with the glory of God. <clears throat> Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose, whose sin is covered. covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely, the rush of great waters, they shall not reach you. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. worship folder, you'll find it printed at the top of page four, at the beginning of the reading. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that, following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our reading. Our first lesson today, the first Sunday in Lent, the Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. And then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading, our epistle lesson, is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man. Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory 
Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. We continue giving voice to our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. <clears throat> For many years, you have, have been living on the street, moving from one scheme to another to make enough money, steal enough bread. It was a cold, miserable existence, always, stepping only a f always staying only a few steps ahead of the hangman's noose, always fearful of the punishment of what was to come, unwilling to share your name for fear of being trapped. But one day a man approaches and tells you about an inheritance from your distant relative. His name was Adam. Adam something. You think to yourself, oh man, my ship has finally come in for I have an inheritance to look forward to. And even though this lawyer seems a bit too slick, a bit too conniving, I can't help but hope that my inheritance is worth the risk. You attend the reading of the will, and strangely there are guards as you enter the building. No matter, you think, soon I will have what I need to repay my debts and square myself with the law. As the lawyer reads about the events in Adam's hometown, some distant place called Eden, your mind glazes over and you start to tune him out. Your mind runs with all sorts of fantasies of wealth and possessions, with all sorts of worldly possessions. So small, your imagination. Suddenly the word debt is mentioned. It snaps you back into the now. Your descendant, one Mr. Adam, left behind him a staggering debt. As his descendant, you are liable to pay that debt. And you will be held prisoner until you do. You are forever captive to this court, to this world, and to me, your accuser. Prepare to spend the rest of your life in chains with me. Swiftly the guards seize you. They throw you into a debtor's prison, a place of pain and suffering, a place of agony and despair like you've never known. Your cries and the cries of those around you rise up like a fevered cacophony, sweet music to the accuser, but insult to injury of being alone and miserable in a cold cell. Truly, these bars are not just those of your descendant, Adam. He may have given you your inheritance, but you lived your life, his and your failings, and that might have been it. That might have been your life, but if it had not been for a letter, a letter of good news. One day in the midst of your sorrows, a letter arrives. Dear sir, you may not know this, but you are actually the descendant of a great king. He has seen to the research and found that you are related to him. He recently settled his estate in Jerusalem at Golgotha. There he gave over his massive treasures. The accountant was unable to tally everything that was there. He lived a perfect life. Everywhere you failed, he did not. Everything that you had been asked to do, well, these things he did and more. What is more is that he is giving you all these treasures. They will be enough to pay your debts to your accuser. And still countless treasures will remain for you to have and to keep. The king wishes for you to dwell with him in his kingdom. He wishes to supply you with all you need, to give you freedom and liberty in his kingdom. He wants you to live no longer in the lonely places in the world like Adam before, but rather to remain with him in his kingdom forever. You may be wondering just what you have done or how you are connected to this king to deserve these blessings of forgiveness and grace upon grace. Well, in fact, it is nothing you have done, nor is it in any way that you are related to him. In fact, he came down and dwelled in human flesh so that he could be related to you and give you these great gifts. 
You do not deserve these gifts, but for some reason, you are special to the king and worth the price to rescue and save you. And it wasn't long before the accuser came stamping in with his keys. You feel wet, as though covered in water. You feel clean, as though washed in water. The accuser opens the cell and says, you're free to go. Your debts have been paid, he hisses, but I swear you'll be back. That's not what it says in this letter. That's not what the king says. He seems much more trustworthy than you. After clearing the jail and heading outside, you are met by a messenger. They take you to your new home, a mansion of many rooms, a place of opulence, a land where the smells and sights were nothing but new and perfect, a place of glorious singing, of glorious work, a place where every day is the best day. You happen upon your king. You come before his glorious face, too beautiful to describe with human words, and you ask him the only question that matters. Why? Why love and give this inheritance, this identity, this forgiveness and salvation, new life to a nobody? to a broken man, to a worthless lawbreaker, to someone who has never done a good work worthy of merit on my own. Why? You were born into Adam's fall, his sin, his failures, and that is not who my father created you to be. He meant for you to be something more, to have something more than even Adam himself. I went to see that you would have it, I died so that you might live. I bled and suffered so that you would be forgiven. And I do all this because I love you. My inheritance from my father is yours. And he folds you into his arms and embraces you with a holy kiss and a brotherly hug. He invites you into paradise and says, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Our inheritance was death in Adam, but now it is life in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. We continue with our prayers. Merciful Father, though you created all things good, through our first parents, we rebelled against your goodness and, in pursuing our own way, came under the curse of sin and death. We give you thanks for the mercy you showed to your fallen creatures and for your patience until the right time You sent forth your son as the new Adam to be our savior and redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, though we succumbed to the tempter and his lies, your son was resolute as Satan tempted him in the wilderness. Count us righteous in Christ and give us his strength that we may endure in the face of trial and be steadfast and resisting in the face of temptation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, though you gave us stewardship of your good creation, we have often loved those gifts more than you, the giver. Deliver us from our affluence and save us from trusting in our possessions more than in your Son. Teach us to use what you have provided to help and relieve those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, though we deserve nothing of your kindness, you have shown yourself to be the strength of the weak, the guardian of the meek and oppressed, the healer of the sick, 
and the hope of those who mourn. Hear us on behalf of those who are troubled in mind or body, the dying and those who grieve. For our members, <coughs> Janet, Mary, Henry, Esther, Lois, Dorothy, Marty, Dennis, Donna, Bob, Miranda, Oliver, Lonnie, Larry, Marg, Jeannie, Marilyn, Jody, Mary, Lorraine, and Don Botel as well, anticipating the surgery. For those who are near to us, Madeline, Robin, Ann, Vanita, Kobe, Ashlyn, Kathy, Joanne, Linda, Shirley, Marie, Sylvia, Travis, Rita, Tom, Randy, Matt, Logan, Brian, Tina, Beverly, Don, Sonia, Jody, Evelyn, and Doug. For those who are plagued by afflictions of the spirit or disorders of the mind, for the families, friends, and caregivers of Luella Banner and Norma Whaley, recently taken to their heavenly home. For the people, governments, and just those who are in control and have the ability to, to influence circumstance in Iran and in Hong Kong. For our brothers and sisters of the faith who are persecuted because of that faith, but especially those living in North Korea, Nigeria, and Sudan. For all of you, that in their affliction, you may sustain and heal them according to your gracious will, and deliver them to everlasting life in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Merciful Father, though we are unworthy of a place at the table of our Lord, you have bid us to come and eat of his flesh and blood. Give to us faith that we may come in repentance to receive this blessed food of everlasting life and unite us in doctrine and holy living that we may witness harmony before the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, though we have lived too much in fear of the judgment of others, Make us bold in heart so that we may speak your word confidently before those who do not yet know you and willingly invite friends to worship with us. Open our hearts to generously supply the resources for your church to fulfill her calling, both here and throughout the world. And we pray that you would continue to, to sustain and support and give direction to our Lutheran school here in Sioux Falls. And we give thanks that you have uh, extended a call to Derek Bolt, and we pray that you would sustain him in his ongoing ministry <coughs> to the young. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. All these things, O oh merciful Father, and whatever else we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The offering will now be collected. <laughs>
page 10. We continue with our service of the sacrament, which in the hymnal begins on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creatures. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our final hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please be seated. Uh, just a few things to reference today. Our uh, Lenten series will continue uh, on Wednesday at 12 and at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there will be a Lenten supper before our uh, services. And uh, Wednesday, March 4th, was uh, not signed up for on the uh, Lenten supper list. A couple of individuals have uh, agreed to take care of that. They are asking that you might bring, uh, if you were able, uh, cookies, bars, desserts for that Lenten uh, uh, meal. That's this week, March 4th. Um, as well, uh, I might mention to you that, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'd have you take a look at the bulletin uh, in its entirety. Uh, there was an insert today for uh, Sioux Falls Lutheran uh, and the um, Hearts on Fire. If you don't have tickets, you can purchase them today as well as there was a uh, uh, some descriptions of some of the items on auction this year. Uh, there's some really cool ones there, uh, especially I think the Ark Encounter Museum experience. That's pretty neat. Lots of things there to take a look at, so might have you uh, look at that, as well as to remind you that this week is Lutheran Schools Week, uh, and we are uh, both at the Lutheran High School and at the Lutheran Grade School. Uh, we look forward to the, the many things that will be going on this week. I know they have some spirit activities, some pep things, uh, some other stuff. So uh, we are thankful for our Lutheran schools. We celebrate them during Lutheran Schools Week. And we ask maybe that you might remind, uh, remember them in your prayers, uh, especially this week, as well as all of our administrators, teachers, uh, and uh, uh, staff that make those schools run and go. Um, the Lord's blessings. Uh, oh, uh, don't forget, we have Bible study downstairs. And if you're a member of the congregation, you consider this place your church home. We're having a Bible study right now, a joint Bible study, the entire congregation, about some uh, strategic planning ideas and vision and direction of our congregation as we move forward together as a people. Um, so if you uh, feel like you're one of those people who would call yourself the people of this congregation, we would surely love to have you there, to have your opinions counted, uh, and to know what you think about the future of our congregation as well. Lord's blessings be upon you as we continue this kingdom, a kingdom work in this kingdom field. And I love you all very much. There's nothing you can do about it. Lord's blessings.